Wu Chao was born in the year 625. She was an unwanted daughter within a family of a certain economic standing. Wu Chao's father reproached her mother for giving birth to a daughter, as he preferred a male heir. In China, only men were educated, and women were rarely given the opportunity for formal education. Consequently, Wu Chao learned to read and write in secret, hiding behind curtains while her brothers received instruction. Chinese society believed that it was unnecessary to educate women and that they should fulfill a different role. This is how Wu Chao grew up. At the age of 14, her figure was slender and she possessed great beauty. Due to this beauty, her father decided to sell her to Emperor Tai Tsung, of the Tang Dynasty, to become a concubine in his harem. The harem was a dangerous place where concubines competed to become the emperor's favorite. The heir to the throne, Cao Tsung, met Wu Chao while she was a concubine of his father and fell in love with her. It was Chinese tradition that when the emperor died, all his concubines would be confined to a Buddhist convent, have their hair shaved, and remain there for the rest of their lives, never allowed to leave. Wu Chao remained locked in the convent for seven years. During this period, she plotted to escape. She managed to contact Emperor Cao Tsung's mother, asking her to take her out of the convent so she could return to the emperor's side, as they were in love. She successfully escaped the convent, and the emperor made her a concubine. When Cao Tsung became emperor, he already had an official wife and a principal concubine, so the most Wu Chao achieved was becoming a second-grade concubine. The empress did not have a child with the emperor. Wu Chao quickly gave birth to her first son, sparking intense intrigues and conspiracies from the empress and the first concubine, who saw their positions in the harem threatened. Wu Chao conspired against the empress, accusing her of murdering her son when it was Wu Chao herself who had suffocated him. Wu Chao was known for her sweetness and sensuality. She managed to eliminate her adversaries, causing their exile and subsequent murder. She gave birth to four children for the emperor. Wu Chao was named the first consort and, consequently, empress. Her first action was to get rid of the first wife's first son, who was the heir to the throne, by sending him as an ambassador to a distant country. For years after becoming empress, her promiscuous husband, Emperor Cao Tsung, suffered a stroke, leaving him paralyzed and unable to lead a normal life. This turned Wu Chao into the sole ruler. She governed China for 45 years with an iron fist, overseeing a period of maximum expansion, stability, and economic development. She eliminated anyone who dared to question her with death or exile and wiped out a significant part of the royal family. In 675, she poisoned and killed her second son, who was the heir to the throne, to maintain her rule. Her third son became the new heir but was expelled and exiled on serious charges of conspiring against the empress, declared unfit to rule. This ensured her continued dominance. When Wu Chao was 41 years old, she expressed her fear of her young niece, who also had great charms. She feared that she might become the emperor's favorite and ended her by poisoning her. Wu Chao was known for her intelligence and extensive knowledge, she was an avid reader. She improved public administration by encouraging state officials to enhance their knowledge, aiming to improve administration. Throughout her reign, there was not a single rebellion, a rarity in China. She managed to put an end to the usual abuses of power that occurred in the military, which she directed with an iron hand. She was a great patron, protecting and promoting the Chinese cultural world. Her patronage involved providing financial assistance to philosophers, scientists, thinkers, and poets so they could carry out their work with complete freedom. She introduced freedom of worship in the country, a surprising move for the era she lived in, ensuring that every Chinese person could practice their religion as they pleased. With this measure, she was ahead of the well-known Edict of Nantes, issued by the French King Henry IV in 1598. Wu Chao practiced Buddhism and ordered the construction of numerous temples for this religion. She developed a network of hospitals where patients could be attended by the best physicians and Buddhist monks. She favored the study of medical science and promoted the development of a state hospital network to care for mentally ill patients, something quite surprising for the time. She took care to establish a network of state schools throughout the country to elevate the country's educational level, understanding it as crucial for China's future development. 
She limited the power of large oligarchic families and significantly improved the living conditions of women. During her long rule, China's territory expanded to the maximum. For the first time in history, China conquered Korea after a cruel war in the year 688, where the use of the Chinese navy played a significant role. As a consequence of this triumph, she proclaimed herself a divine descendant of Buddha. Thus, in the year 690, she was appointed the sacred and divine emperor of China, something abnormal for the time. There are many legends about her life, as she was a very promiscuous woman. It is said that Wu Chao required every male dignitary who visited her to perform cunnilingus on her. Before this act, she requested them to wash their mouths thoroughly. When she was seventy years old, she formed a harem of young men to attend to all her needs. This male harem was known as the Crane Institute. Wu Chao died at the age of eighty-one, after nearly fifty years of rule. Her death was attributed to diabetes, which she began to suffer, causing significant physical damage. She was succeeded as emperor by her fourth son, Zhongzong. Chinese prophecies foretold that someone with feminine features and the heart of a tiger would ascend to the throne of China. In this prophecy, Empress Wu Chao was seen. Wu Chao is recognized as a great empress of a progressive court for the policies she implemented, being ahead of her time. However, this did not prevent her from ruling with an iron fist, not hesitating to eliminate her political enemies directly or indirectly.